We headed to the far reaches of Missouri, a five-hour drive passing small towns and farm fields down a roller coaster of a country highway because we wanted to find this man. Mojo. <whistles> My boy. Chris Langan and his wife Jeannie have about 130 acres here. I think it's about uh, 20 horses, two llamas, two cows. Along with assorted barn cats and dogs. So what's so special about this low-key guy living a low-key life? We'll go inside his house. See that chalkboard? See the board in the living room? Can you figure out what any of that means? We couldn't either. That's not doodling. This particular paper is on something called a conspansive manifold. That's the work of a guy with an estimated IQ of about 200. Most of us have an IQ of 100. Score in the 140 range and you're in the genius to near genius category. 195 to 200? Well, you're talking one in several billion people. Now, historians figure that Einstein and Franklin scored about 160. Darwin, 165. Galileo, 185. Isaac Newton, 190. That means Langan could possibly be the smartest person in the world. When he's not working with the animals, he's busy with his CTMU, the Cognitive Theoretic Model of the Universe. Uh, it's the th a theory that studies the relationship between mind and reality. In other words, what's out there in the real world, how does the mind relate to it? And Langan is trying to prove nothing less than the existence of God. Is there a heaven? Yes. How do we know that? You don't. So you believe or you don't? It's not that simple. Uh, I happen to know there's a, there's a heaven uh, because I know that you can use your will to create things. In other words, do you continue to exist after you die? Absolutely. Nothing in this universe is wasted. Nothing ever ceases to exist, really. The essence always remains preserved. So who is this guy and why haven't you heard of him? He began speaking at six months old, reading at three, born in California but constantly being uprooted. We uh, didn't have a lot of money and the old man was always in need of a job so we had to go where the work was. He was poor, skipped a few grades. Teachers urged his classmates to be like Chris. So how did they respond? Well, they beat him up. As a matter of fact, I had to fight my way through high school. So at 12, he got into bodybuilding. He tried college, but never finished. It was costly, and, well, he was smarter than the teachers. There's the fool, and there's Star, his mother. So is Langan out here in what some consider the middle of nowhere, squandering a precious gift? I mean, why am I not a famous politician or a uh, 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 financier? filthy rich, uh, simply because those things don't mean that much to me. I'd rather have some meaning in my life, and this is how I get it. So how has he made a living? Construction, farmhand, ranch hand, cowboy, firefighter. I worked for the Forest Service for about four years. Um, just anything I could get my hands on. He even started his own rock band. He skipped an audition in L.A. and went to New York instead, where for years he worked as a bouncer in a bar. <laughs> He met Jeannie online through a high IQ group. She was born and raised in Brooklyn, played for the American chess team, and now teaches online as a psychology professor for a couple universities. So intellectually speaking, you're no slouch. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> okay. That's a compliment. <laughs> I gotta keep up with him. <laughs> So you may be thinking, why Missouri? Well, Langan says before moving here, he pretty much figured that Missouri would be one of the last places he'd ever end up. They found the property online and came out here to check it out. We came down to view the property and we fell in love with it. Jeannie was very, very taken with the beauty of the place. As a matter of fact, she started crying as she was looking at it. And I realized then that I couldn't say no. Langan is smart enough to know there's no fighting a woman's tears. <laughs> Is that right? No, it can't be done. <laughs> we had to ask the Jeopardy question. How do you think you'd do? Langan says sometimes he aces it. Sometimes he can barely answer a question. There is a certain kind of mind that I call a uh, garbage trap sort of mind. <laughs> Someone who sees everything and remembers it. Usually that kind of mind does not belong to a person who is capable of deep thought. There's no hesitation when he answers. He's articulate and direct. We wanted to know, is he ever at a loss for words? 
sometimes it's hard to find the words when somebody expresses love. When I went to visit my mother, uh, for instance, she's been a little bit uh, ill lately. Um, I, I had to tell her that uh, that I loved her, and she told me that she loved me. And and uh, then there was a long period of silence because what can you follow that up with? Langan says yes, he can tell when your eyes glaze over if he loses you in a conversation. He says he then just changes the subject. He does sometimes walk into a room and forgets why, but he says he believes mentally he's not slowing down. If anything, his brain is picking up speed. If you want to know more about his work, we've got a link to the CTMU at KMOV.com. Ray Preston, News 4, St. Louis.